like a cat, it was a present from my brother. I read a lot of books, but I couldn't see between the lines. I'll have another cup of coffee if you don't mind. Do this, man. We're live. Good morning. Good, Good morning. Friday Good morning. Good morning. Uh, happy birthday, Randy Baker. I do not have your cup. I I'm have the cup, cup, Randy. Thank you very much, sir. Happy birthday there in Ohio, Randy Baker, my dear friend. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I don't have a cup of coffee. I have another. I have a bowl of beans. So is that beans? At least it's beans. For a second, I thought it was Lucky Charms. It almost looks like Lucky no, Charms. No, no, I wish I there. Was I Lucky wish Charms there was Lucky Charms. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, this is my homemade beans. I, uh, you know, added avocado, cottage cheese. You know, it's a real good, uh, you know, pseudo protein, um, high fat, low carb um, breakfast. You know, I keep trying to do low carb and no sugar and not drinking and i do very well because i want to lose some weight i do very well until about seven o'clock at night and then i really want a chocolate cookie and a glass of wine <laughs> i know my wife you know, got some ice know. cream i'm like stop i don't want it oh you know, allison you know. brought home ice cream right after the day after i told her i was trying to lose weight she brought home ice cream i'm like you're, you're trying to kill me Right. It's like, what are you doing? I'm, because the only thing I could think about the entire time watching the movie is when is she going to crack into the ice cream? Right. <laughs> yes. And look, she she's like, well, we'll eat it before eight o'clock. So we stay inside the diet thing. And I'm like, that doesn't help. It's still ice cream. No, it doesn't help. It doesn't help. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, you know, not me. Well, my friend Mark Carroll. What weight do you have to lose? What weight do you have to lose? I. Do not see you. At, I've never seen you overweight. Um, well, the you know everybody's got some pandemic pounds on them, and me. I'm turning sixty two in November, so it's like all the things that used to be muscle, they just drop right down to my belly. I do fifty <laughs> sit ups and twenty five push ups a day. I look good for about five minutes afterwards, and then I watch all the muscles sag right down to the belly pouch. <laughs> Yeah. If I flex, um, if I flex, they're all there. I got like, I, I don't have a, a six pack, but I got like a two pack and I got <laughs> biceps. But if I unflex, the biceps just drip right down into the stomach pouch. And it's just, a, it's just, a, I, I, if I had a baby kangaroo, it would be okay. <laughs> I, I feel like I do have a baby kangaroo sometimes. It's like, what do you am at least I have a two baby? pack. I have a keg and this is not working. <laughs> <I have a laughs> gotta, you know. Just, you know, if we're going to start quitting in terms of beer, you know, it's not working for me right now. It's not working for you right now. So uh, what are you up to today, Luis? Uh, how's Chicago? Oh, gosh, man. I went out last night. I mean, went to go drop off. Oh, so went to the Rin for this past weekend. Which and... I can't wait to see the photos. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we do. We got some photos, but. So a friend of mine, she she became like a VIP uh, person for the rent fair. So she's like, hey, you know, if you come pick me up, we could do the VIP parking. I'm like, super. You know, the rent fair is up in Wisconsin, actually. It's right on the border, right? It's right on the Illinois-Wisconsin border. So I dropped her off and everything. And then, you know, a couple of days later, she's like, you know, you still have my parking pass in your car. And I'm like, you know what? I'll take a trip up to Chicago because yeah, I'm right on the border myself from Indiana, Illinois side, right? So I'm like, I'll take a trip up to Chicago. I'm like, you know what? I'll see this at night. I'll see this at night to take back her pass. What should have been a 40 minute drive each way. I, it, the whole trip took me three hours. Oh, oh my so God. Well, that's Chicago, man. That is well, there's Chicago. So much, there's, so, there's, so much, there's so much construction. I ran into a couple of accidents, people, you know, and all these little things just add up, you know, lane closures. And you're just going, I almost welcome the Delta variant. <laughs> you know, it's like, I, I, I know you're home. just joking, but I know what you mean. Yeah. Like New Orleans traffic is crazy again. I found yeah. myself, you know, driving into the city, just sitting in traffic, just going, man, traffic was so nice during the pandemic. You had to find something nice about the damn thing. 
traffic was less. It was easier to deal with. You know, I've been yeah. flying to Chicago really for 25 years to play gigs. First with the mouth, and then in the mm-hmm. 15 years since the mouth, I've gone up there many times. And about six years ago, and my friend Nunu would pick me up at the airport anytime I flew to Chicago. Nunu's a great photographer, a dear friend. We would have a ball. But we would always sit in about an hour's worth of traffic to get from the airport back to wherever we were staying. And one time he was busy, you know, he's doing something, and he's, he just says, look, man, take the blue line from the airport and get off at such and such a stop. You'll be two blocks from the apartment I have you set up in to stay. I say, great. So I got my guitar, got my thing, hop on the blue line. I'm down there in like 10, 15 minutes. I was like, Nunu, why didn't you tell me this years ago? I would never have you pick me up at the airport ever again. I'll hop on the damn line, convenient as can be, sit in AC, playing chess until I get to my point of destination, and then I'll get in a car in Chicago. Traffic is undocumented. Okay, the blue line is amazing because it goes right into the airport, right? Mm-hmm. You know, but I'm at yeah. Chicago and when it comes, I don't know, I don't know how many people understand what you said when you said blue line, right? But that's the Chicago train system. Every train has a different color, you know, and I'm the person who drives everywhere and, you know, walk and drive everywhere. So I'm colorblind when it comes to the trains in Chicago, right? Like blue line, red line. I'm like, listen, dude, I'll just drive there and I'll get there. I'll pay God knows what I need to for parking, but. I'm not really a train person myself, you know. I don't mind something. the paying for parking, but the traffic is just like, it makes you want to hurt someone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, wait, why is, why is somebody wanting to wash my mouth out with soap? I didn't even know what I said. Um, so, um, what's it called? Yeah, I mean, so like my nephew's coming in from Germany. He, you know, he's going to stay with me for a couple of days. He sends me a message saying, hey, Uncle Lily, can you pick me up like at 5 p.m. on a Monday. I'm like, <laughs> 5 p.m. on a Monday. Oh, and he goes, my friends are uh, willing to pick me up if you can't do it. I'm like, okay. Mijo, yeah, those are great friends. Have them pick you up because right now they're better friends than I am an uncle, right? Because I'm yeah, not going to skip out of work to pick your ass up to be there at 5. So I love you. Maybe yeah. not as much as your friends love you. But yeah, I, I mean, if your friends drop and say no, then I'll spend two hours in traffic one way just to go get you, you know, because you're right. A lot of that does still get backed up. One of the wonderful things about being a musician is, is you seldom have to drive during traffic times. And the few times that we do have to drive during traffic times, we're always like, what in the hell is this city coming to? When when did this happen? Um, When did this happen? Right. And I, and I always, you know, being older, I just blame the young people. It's all those young fuckers that moved to town, man. <laughs> That's right. People from everywhere else that got to have cars and drive everywhere. These young fuckers are ruining everything for me. Exactly. Exactly. Because we're used to like leaving at like two o'clock in the afternoon. There's no traffic yet. We come home at like maybe 10, uh, 11 o'clock at night, maybe, you know, midnight. It's like, it's always, you know, it's not that bad. And then you wind up having to leave at like seven one morning. You're like, what in the fuck is this world coming to? Yeah. This is- yeah. It, well, I'll tell you what. The, my last tour out west, which was three years ago, I was on my way from L.A. to play a gig in uh, in Portland. And I didn't have one in San Francisco on this trip. Usually I would, but I didn't. And my old pal Lawrence Radiker, uh, he lives in San Francisco. He's an actor. And I call him and he says, hey, man, you're going to be driving right past San Francisco. Why don't you just stop and spend the night? And I'll set you up with an apartment to stay in. I said, well, that sounds great. I'd love to have dinner and drinks with you. 63 miles outside of San Francisco is where the bumper to bumper traffic started. 63 miles outside of San Francisco. And I sat bumper to bumper all the way until I got into the city and got off of the interstate. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, I seriously thought about just calling him and saying, man, dinner with you would not even be worth it. I, I love you. But I don't love anybody this much. Can we just Skype? I'll go to a diner. We'll Skype. We'll eat dinner at the same time. (laughs) I actually do love him that much. And and so I went into the city and had a great apartment to stay in. And we had a great uh, meal. I think we we, we watched the Saints game and drank beers and got stupid. But uh, So it was a good time. Traffic in San Francisco, L.A., Chicago, Atlanta. Just like I think it was invented to, to test the limits of people's endurance. 
Like when I see that there were 50 people shot in Chicago over the weekend, some people assume it's gang violence in, in the South Side. I immediately assume it's road rage. <laughs> people are fucking man. Uh, I've driven into Chicago, like from the South, and you hit like, you can see buildings way off in the distance. Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. you're already in traffic. You're like already like oh, looking yeah. down. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I'm trying to get to there. Holy crap. I don't even believe I'm yeah. doing this. <laughs> yeah, that was that's, the best that's, thing that's about it. where... It's one of those times where time actually looks like a measurement. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's only like five minutes where you're like, no, this is going to... That That is not 20... Like one time when I was in New Orleans, I was staying in the... Uh, I was staying in the was it in the West Bank, and I was gonna meet Polly up for breakfast. And Polly's like, "Where are you at?" And because you know how you had that bridge that crosses into you know New Orleans from the West Bank. Yeah, the Crescent City Connection. Up, this whole thing's backed up, and I'm going. How can I give Polly a good estimate of my ETA? Because I don't know New Orleans traffic. I looked at it and I eyeballed how far I need to go. And my cousin's texting Paul for me, and I looked at it and said, "Tom will be there at nine o'clock." And sure as shit, we were there at nine o'clock. I was like really impressed with myself that I actually had a beat on New Orleans traffic. Well, it's, it's sort of like it's ingrained into you after all the times you've sat in traffic in Chicago. A Chicagoan yeah. can just do exactly that. They can just look down the road and go, "Yeah, it's going to be about an hour." Yeah, well, that's the one <laughs> yeah, that didn't happen to me yesterday. You know, that didn't happen to me yesterday. It's like, yeah, this is going to be about forty. Fuck, that was that's what it was. Forty five minutes. It was like, I was, then it was like. I'm on the north. I'm on the north side of the Circle Interchange. Nope, more traffic there, and a guy hit another guy, and they're yelling on each other on the on the road. It's like, you guys do you. Let me just pass. You know, it's like one of those. Yeah. Let me slide step out of this conversation. I don't see shit, so let's just let the worst yeah. of the world pass you guys <laughs> up. You know. Well, I, so, I, yeah, have so to, I have to ask you a question about that, right? So, it, it, let's uh, let's take a real quick look at some of these photos. Now, you were gone oh, yeah. Renaissance Fair. You were gone. To places now i've got this first one up and i'm just curious when you were driving is this what you looked like when you were driving uh, in that traffic for 45 40 fuck minutes that, that would that would have been amazing so here's my thing <laughs> that was me trying to get covid ready for the rent fair right i don't have a mask if you notice if you look at that picture again i don't know if i give you more than one picture i had the blue mask under the overall Oh, yes, that. yes. Okay, now I can see it. <laughs> Very nice. So I, mean? so, I, so I was trying to be good. I, you know, I don't want, I mean, listen, if I didn't get, I hate to say it this way, like, if someone's going to give you, like, a VD or something, you've got to make sure she's, like, really worth it, right? But, you know, let's go where, you know. Well put. <laughs> so, so, you know, if I didn't get COVID from somebody, you know, or the, or the variant, it has to be, like, you know, Work hard for it, right? I don't it just want to be like. And this around. one, it looks like you're even more COVID ready. So oh yeah, so that's what, so that was me testing the mask under the regular costume. Okay, so I like how Paul thinks that that was a crown when he said that was a crown. That's actually from a TV show from the '80s, um, from a cartoon show called He Man and the Masters of the Universe. Okay, so this is He Man stuff. Yeah, that's not He Man. I'm Ram Man. All right, not exactly the name you want in prison, but. You know, it's so then it's like right? So, and, and here's, you know, here's I, a head to toe of Ram Man. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So I try to, so, you know, I try to keep my character. Listen, I am man with, with my body, right? But, you know, so I try to pick characters that I go work around and I'll still look decent. You know, I'm not going to be, you know, kind of trying to be fat Superman. Everybody's like, yeah, you can costume what you want. I'm like, and I appreciate that. But, I pick something that works well and people identify or people understand and see. So I went with Ram Man. If you look at that picture again, you know, all that all that stuff on top, you know, I, I actually found some like kitty um, football pads and a Goodwill. And, the, <laughs> and that's resting on football pads. Right? So that's why that looks like so built up. Somebody thought it had it, a lot it of looks like It looks like a medieval hazmat suit. <laughs> <It does. laughs> so and so that's why so that's why I took it to rent for I said you know, I only wore it one time and I couldn't wear it with the group that I that it, because it was a whole group of people who were dressed like Masters of the Universe. And I couldn't wear it with them because Paul Rudd had a reschedule, so I had to go for the reschedule for Paul Rudd's signing. So I was like, Hey guys, you know, I'm dressed as Ram Man, we took a couple of pictures and I took off. So I never really actually got a chance to 
wear the suit. And I'm going, what better thing that looks like a medieval costume than the ticket to the Ren Fair? Yeah. So that was actually my real beta test. You know, how was it falling apart? What do I need to improve on? You know, little things so like that. So this is my right? favorite thing is like the way the sunglasses fit in this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it was made for those sunglasses yeah sort of it sort of was you know actually so what happens is you start to figure and then once you start using it right just like anything else you know what kind of things you want to improve on it right so i actually have a clone wars kitty like from the star wars movies right like they will wear like the stormtrooper masks I actually found a Clone Wars thing that looks like it would be a great visor for this. I would just cut it down and put it over on top of the mask, and then I'll really be COVID ready. I'll look nothing like the character, but I'll have my sunglasses. <laughs> I, won't need, I won't need the sunglasses. you know. And, at the, and then the back of the costume, I even put the word Ram Man, because people are not going to know who I am. It's so like, who is that? <laughs> That's Ram Man. You know? It's telling like you try to get real practical in your uses and how you... Uh, and how you use them and so forth, right? So, yeah, I mean, honestly, I'm trying to make an additional face piece to that front to make it just a little bit more COVID ready if I take it back. Well, here, here, here's more adventures of Ram Man. Oh, um, uh, yeah, that's my friend Leah. She, you know, she's a, uh, you know, I mean, and the thing about these cosplayers, you know, these things are almost like Comic Cons, right? But so everybody gets a chance to use outfits they never used before at a con. Um, she had the whole, you know, forest hair thing with the antlers you know that would look pretty right. sweet you had her going there around. you got herself so she's like a wood yeah. sprite or something right yeah and see but you know what i love about this picture you have everybody around her not dressed at all right so she sticks out whether right. or not she wants you see what i'm saying you got this guy yeah. um, you know covering his cry you know this girl with her belly so, you know and you know these cosplayers are you know show up ready to go yeah they don't even care huh <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, so I here we go. This is a little she bit later out. in the day. Yeah. This is uh. This seems like it's party time. Well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Who's that? So you could tell. So all right. So parking lots areas they had different names for them, and one even was called the plague. We're like, dude, can you guys like think of a better name right now? We don't need a, a plague parking lot. So we're the who's that? So yeah. So we're taking pictures towards the end of the day. That was uh. Uh, my friend Zena and her friend that she had out from California. Oh, wait, don't her we have to make sure their Zina. names? So hold on. Let's make sure their names oh, pop yeah. up, right? So, oh, yeah. Hart. No, yeah, yeah. Me and that, yeah. Her, yeah, her name is actually uh, yeah, Zena Hart. So with the name like Heart Shape, that's pretty amazing. So I love that name. <laughs> yeah. But, and, you know, those two costumes, you know, the girl, uh, the girl in the red, she just had stuff from her mom that she put together and it looked pretty freaking medieval, which was great, you know? So because right, this, about... this is one of the few ones where you're posing with a girl who's not attractive. Um... Hey, listen, they're all beautiful people. What's wrong with you, Mike? <laughs> so, so what ends up happening is they... Is that a real have... person? Was that a real person or no, a statue? No, no, no. So watch, go, go back to it. They have what they call like the throne room almost, right? They have six, uh -huh. it's like, it looks like a little gazebo, and they have about six different stages... And you can sit down with different kind of thrones, and that's you know this, that's actually you can sit down in her pot, you know. Nice, so, nice. Yeah, so that's what we do there. And so we got this is must be another friend of yours, Sarah. Okay, yeah. So actually, that's my friend's sister. That was my first time meeting her. Um, that was my first. That was her first time at a run fair. Both of them. So nice. they had so they had gone down. They drove in from Green Bay. Okay, so. I'm like, come on down to be fun. They'll be like, okay. So they get there before me. And I said, you know what? I'm suffering through heavy traffic again for Chicago. Which, again, it's supposed to be an hour drive. It took me two hours and 15 minutes. And um, I get there. And I'm like, how long have you guys been waiting for? They're like, oh, 30 minutes. You know, they're being real nice. There's like 30 minutes. And I'm like, oh, cool, cool costumes. When do you guys buy these? She goes, just right now. <laughs> Wait a second. For those 30 minutes that you claimed that you were waiting for me, you went <laughs> shopping here. Because they have a lot of they have a lot of shops there at the Ren Fair. You went shopping right. at the Ren Fair. You bought yourself a Renaissance costume, changed in and out of it, put stuff away in the lockers, and now they have it for 30 minutes. I'm like, man, I felt <laughs> really inefficient, you know? I'm like, jeez, you know? 
<laughs> it took me 30 minutes just to put on a costume itself. I was like, wow, this is, they were, you know, they were really good. He bought costumes there and, you know, they had a blast, you know. And uh, so the thing to get at the Ren Fair are uh, the turkey it, legs. So there you go, the calzones, I, coffee. This must be the. You know, it's yeah. funny, Luis, when Mike, when Mike popped up that picture, the turkey yeah. leg wasn't the thing I noticed. <laughs> what do you know well, <laughs> the, the gorgeous girl you're standing with. Well, you know, Zena's a very attractive friend of mine. You know, and you know she. And how you in a costumes yeah. always attracts beautiful women, beautiful young women at that. Oh wait, here you go. He's not even in costume here. He's just there. You remember Jamie? <laughs> Jamie you remember Jamie, right? Of course, I remember Jamie. She's unforgettable. That's, that's Jamie right there. So that was actually towards the end of the day. She was with her flock, and. You know, you could tell at the end of the day because I even had the armor off. I was just done, you know. So the best <laughs> right. thing about the armor being like football pads, take them off, put them down, and you know that's why that's heavy. why I look like a squire or something. at that point, yeah. right? Pretty so, much. You know, I have to say, I, I love the composition of this photo. Where do you see the lighting on this, Paul? It's, it's just the lighting, just too cool. Really nice. That's what you notice first, just the lighting. Listen, listen, <laughs> yeah, they're all either. Again, <laughs> <laughs> They're already in their turkey legs, right? And, you know, what made me oh, laugh about legs it, that my two sisters is, <laughs> what's that? I didn't hear that. He said, oh, there were turkey <laughs> legs in that photo? I didn't notice. <laughs> well, that was, a, that was a turkey taking the picture. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. Yes, so, she's right. You're right, Lorelai. Louis Angels. It's, uh, oh, I mean, gosh. Yeah. Louis <laughs> Angels. I love it. Hey, Laura and I shows up in one of those pictures. Which one? I'm sorry. Laura really? was out there. Laura was out there for the weekend. Oh yeah, she and one of them. Yes. Which one? Let's see. Uh, the one with all the women. Let me see. Uh, where are we oh, at? Right, we way. got this one. Is she in this one? That's the one of them. She's right in the middle. Okay, there she nice. is. Hey, Lorelai. So, yep, I guess you're one of Louis Angels. What are you gonna do? She 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 has a pickle go. right in the middle of her hand. <laughs> With, With the, the big flower on her hat, that was nice. Yeah, no, no, she was, no, she was the Mad Hatter, or wherever she was going as. But you know, yeah, she was there for the weekend. She, she was like, Luis, I don't. She stays overnight, man. She's like, I don't mess around because you know the Renfrew is a real easy place to drink the meat and get drunk. You know, so last time I was there, I took a flask of tequila. You know, and it was like. It was, you know, it didn't make it more amazing, but it did not make it not more amazing. You know, it was good. You know, <laughs> you know it, was, it, was, it was fun. It was fun. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, you know. But did, did, then you had the then you had the one that looked like on a throne. Did you did you have that picture handy? Um, that was like the, the throne room. I thought that was. Hmm. No, he didn't like on a throne. Yeah, I saw that yeah. one. I might have missed that one. Sorry. That's all right. That was that was that was the that was the big that was the big that was the big reveal right there on that one. Of course, that's the one I missed. It had to be the one with the big reveal. Um, let me just see if I've even got it on my phone. Louise, you should. Oh, I know you. I know uh, you did. My that sister Sandy like says you have good taste in ladies, Louise. Uh, they're all sweet people, Paul. They're all listen. You know, Paul. I hate to say this, and I, I'm going to sound like a, such a, and, and like I, I, I stole this from you, right? I really stole this from you. <clears throat> And I tell people oh, yes, this one, and I tell one. people, dang it, how did I miss that one? <laughs> That's the best one. See, I knew I sent it to you, Polly. Yeah. The one I still, the one I still from you, Polly, all the time is, I dig people who dig me. You Let's know, see if I can get it. To, I, no, you can't see that. Oh, oh. You can't see that. <laughs> Those are my say, favorite people. It has been when people used to ask me, "What's your favorite city to play in?" I would always say, "Any city where they like me," because I dig people that dig me. Yep. Right. And I actually still, you know what? And for me, that keeps relationships easy and simple, right? Yeah. So if I don't have to, you know, if I don't have to work on a friendship, you know, then, you know, it's a good, it's a good friendship. You know, if I could say, hey, Paul, let's meet up for a beer. You send me back the text message. Sure, Louise. Or if I tell somebody, let's meet up for a beer. And like, you got like Shamar Allen show happening on this, this coming Sunday. You know, and you like you tell people, hey, this musician's coming from New Orleans. Let's go check him out. And, you know, you get that silence. You know, people check their phone every five seconds. Right. Right. And then you're like, you know what, dude, I don't have to work so hard to invite you to something. You have the people go, I can make it. I can't make it. Right. So 
I come back to that whole thing, you know. The terrible thing about texting, though, is like somebody might just be busy. But for instance, two weeks ago, I texted Debbie Davis to uh, some to offer her a gig that somebody had offered me that I couldn't take. And Debbie usually gets back to me right away, and she didn't. And for the first few days, I was trying to think like. What could I have done to piss Debbie off? <laughs> but you know, Debbie's got two kids and a husband and a mother living with her. She's probably just missed the text, you know? Right. And, and here oh, I yeah. am just thinking, oh my God, Debbie's mad at me. I wonder what I did, you know? It took me a week yeah. to realize, no, Debbie's got a life. You, right. you sent her a text five days ago that she has long since forgotten about and you need to let go of. Right. And, right. and to your point, I very rarely invite people who are married with two kids and a husband. Okay, so yeah, it seems rather, said, rather obvious that you rather. No, I have never actually seen you with a married person or children. I have seen you with yeah. a girl young enough, wherein I wanted to hit on her mother. Oh gosh, right, that's right. I mean, he I brought mean, uh, he brought point. this girl to one of my shows in the brief period where I was single. Beautiful young girl named Alexis, and she brought her mother. And the, the girls, I mean, she's beautiful, but she's, you know, you know, if I was 20 years younger, she'd still be too young for me. But right. her mother was pretty damn hot. I was like, <laughs> wonder if Louise's friend would mind if I bought her mother a drink. <laughs> and her mother got hotter, actually. She got into that whole noon weight loss thing, and she took off 20 pounds. I said, from where? And when I saw her, I was like, okay. I mean, not that she was, anything was wrong with her before, but... She felt better. She felt happier. I'm like, you go, lady. I'm, you know. Hey, man, I'm feeling better is the whole thing, right? Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. So, yeah, I remember, yeah, like I said, I very rarely invite out married people unless they're like, dude, I need to get away from this. I need to, you know, just had a kid. I mean, a friend of mine who's like one of my normal crawfish people, right? She's married, but when they have the crawfish things at tubes, she's always there, right? She's always there. So this, so she had a she had a kid during COVID, and you know Danny had, Beck had a little private invite for people for crawfish, and uh, she goes, Louis, he goes, Louis, who if you want to invite some of your flock to this, it'd be awesome. And I told her, she goes, I'm stuck at home with a kid. Da, 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 da. So Danny actually let me buy some to take home to her, and I, here I am taking this big old tray of crawfish to her because. You know, she was just happy and amazed that even though she had a kid, she didn't have to miss the crop. I mean, this lady loves to eat. She matches me because, you know, they have everything out in big old serving trays, right, when they do the crawfish. And this lady matches me all the time or at least even passing me up sometimes with the crawfish eating. I'm like, fuck, I'm done. This lady just, she yeah, just. You, boom, you're boom, a good boom. friend doing that, Luis. No, oh, you know, she, I mean, because this, like I said, I dig people who dig me, right? And. You know, those those friendships where you never had any, you know, anger with people. It's always been easy sailing, right? You never had to worry about this, worry about that. It's just like, and those are the friendships that I like where you don't have, I guess you don't have to work to be like, okay, you know, what, you know what's going on? Or, you know, people just, you know, we can trust me. This is a whole conversation on its own. This is not even another cup of coffee. This is another cup of psychology or something, right? So, I mean, it's, uh, it's different. But like I said... So all get it off your chest, Louise. What's that? I said, get it off your chest, man. Get it off oh, your chest. <laughs> no, no, but I can you know, I, you, but... I, I, I always made friends with people who were shitty to me. Those were my favorite people because I was raised with beatings and, and, and you know, abuse. So, the, like, the, the woman I married abused me just like my mom. I want a girl just like the girl that married dear old dad. And my bestest friends were always guys that would go off on me and I would just take it. And then I got to be older and I thought, gee, that's no fun. I'm going to just dig people that dig me. <laughs> it took, took you a little while to figure that one out, though, didn't it? Well, you know, I never was the brightest bulb on the tree, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah. So that's why I said. So I, so I stole that Paul philosophy, right? I was like, you want to come out? Let's go out, right? And then, of course, when you post something, you get people who are, who are like, you know, where was my invite? You're like, dude, you were invited three <laughs> weeks ago for something else, and you didn't take me up on the invite, so your invites get dropped, right? So, again. It's, just, it's it, like it, a work you know, call, right? It's like, you know, you can't keep calling the same people over and over, call, you know, if you, you miss a couple times and you're off the list. It's, sorry. Yeah. 
It you is. It's or at works. least you go to the bottom. So that's all, you know. Well, you know, most people that take, you know, you want to go to the people that are going to say yes. That's just a pretty simple thing. Who likes rejection? Right. 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 So, yeah, so that's, what it, so that's what it comes back to with me. So the people who I invite who say yes, you know, let's make it happen, right? Or, you know, I, I think when something like you want to go somewhere and somebody goes, I don't have the money. I'm like, wait, that wasn't the question. Okay. <laughs> you don't have the money, you know, if, it, if it's going to a concert and, you know, you really want to go. But, you know, if it works with me spotting you something, I have no problem spotting you. Shit, if it means you're having for a good time, you know, and... You know, if it was worth that twenty bucks or that thirty bucks, whatever it was that we were going to go see, and we're having a good time, the memory was much more valuable to me than the thirty bucks. You know, and that's the way I see it. Well, you know, to be fair, people shouldn't assume that when you call them and invite them someplace, that you're going to pay for it. Should they? That's or true. Or maybe they should. No, that's they true. Should. No, that's true. Oh, no, I'm not saying I pay for it, but I mean, if you present it to me, it's, it's like some people who live in Chicago who don't have a car who want to go to a run fair. But they, you know, they're getting up there, you know, and, and it's cool that they're not assuming that you're going to drive them, right. right? They'll be like, dude, I don't have a car to get up there. It's like, dude, you're on my way. I can, I can take you. Right? That's it's not, it's not, it's, it's not like you're, you know, it's not like you live out in freaking Joliet or somewhere where I have to like take. And the this, long is way around. Mo- this is him being What's modest that? because Louis, is, that's you being modest because you've given me rides. And when he says, if it's not out of my way. He means if it's not beyond a 60 mile radius out of my way, he, he will drive 60 miles out of it. Like, hey, Paul, do you need a ride to the gig? I'm like, Luis, you're in Hammond on that side and I'm going to so- Joliet on the north side. He's like, oh, man, it's, it's not a long drive. And one of my friends after I hung up was like, it's a long drive. <laughs> your, friend, your friend really likes you. <laughs> He could have gotten to Joliet in 15 minutes without you. Now it's going to be an hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> uh, well, you know, it depends on the situation. And, you know, sometimes a good, a, good car, a, good, a, good, a good car ride is a good chat, right? I mean, you're enjoying the car ride. You know, it makes it makes a trip feel like 10 to 15 minutes, even though you'd be stuck in for an hour. I mean, I'm always going to dread that trip we took to Dayton, Ohio, though, man. That was, like, weird, dude. That was... Okay. I've never problems. confessed this to you before, Luis, but some friends of ours, uh, you know, Connie, her husband, and uh, had given me some really potent brownies. And they warned me, because I'm, 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 I'm so macho. I'm like, ah, oh, nothing's going to get me. They gave me some really potent brownies. And Sonia, who never did edibles in her life you know she's the cleanest straight arrow she drinks and that's it and she was flying back to atlanta and she says oh that might relax me for the flight and i give it to her and i forget to say it's really potent and she had the worst flight of her life she was having paranoid delusions she was nauseous and i found that out later because i got in your i got in the pony and the sun's down and at first i'm just feeling great man i going to this thing and the high hits me and I'm like, yeah, this is great. And then the sun starts baking that shit into my brains and the potency of the thing was way beyond anything I'd ever had. Next thing I know, I'm just stretched out in Luis's car, melting in the sun, about to throw up, perspiring. And Luis is like, man, what happened to you? And I don't want to tell him I ate a brownie, you know? So I'm just like, I don't know, Luis, I'm on this medication that's got me, I don't know, man. Polly. Paulie, if you don't think I knew you took something, then I would be the fucking stupidest thing in the world, dude. I don't know, man. I took the blue pill. I don't know what happened, man. I took the blue one. You know, being your friend, I know you took something, homie. I'm not going to be like, gee, I wonder if Paulie took that end, though, and I'd rather fuck the Paul. Come on, man. You guys get a little bit more credit than that. I mean, it was 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 pathetic. We're stuck stuck in traffic. We're stuck in traffic. And I love, you know, having that convertible and considering that I can't put the top down in the winter so much. And when I mean by so much, I have done it. Um, I'm like, you know, Polly's from New Orleans. He can handle the sun. I mean, he's had a worse shit than this, right? So <laughs> we're in the highway. Well, here's the better wait, wait, time out. Here's the better part. Polly's like, dude, I'm fucking hungry. Um, I didn't get to eat a chance to eat at Ted and Connie's, you know, what the fuck? And I said, I'm like, hey, I call my mom up. I'm like, you know, mom, I got Paul coming this way. Can you whip up some breakfast? 
my mom goes, I just had this and this and this. I said, perfect. So she made Polly some homemade chilaquiles, some eggs, and mm. some beans, right? Uh. Yeah, it was just, Paul, here's some Mexican food. Let's get on the road. So Polly was well fed, man. Like, not even a half hour notice. My mom was just like, boom. Like, Shit. Oh, your like, mom was awesome like that, man. She was a great cook and she was such a great yeah. hostess. So, you know, so we were with bellies full, right? So I knew it wasn't like something where, you know, it wasn't like probably went on an empty stomach where people was going to get hangry or, you know, hungry or whatever they call it nowadays, right? So we get stuck in some Indiana traffic and the sun just starts beating down and I'm like nice and crispy. I'm like enjoying this. Probably like, I, I need air. I'm like, Paul, it is open. I was like, I need air conditioning. So we're like, oh. I don't know if we pulled over, but we put the top back on. We put the air conditioner on. My car, poor car uh, like full blast. Paulie's going to go with the air conditioner. I'm like driving like, motherfucker. And I was like, <laughs> so I'm supposed to have it like a cool, you know, top down ride right now. And then Paulie gets to the point where where we have to like pull over to a gas station somewhere in Indiana. And that's where Polly said, that's when you see some of the most questionable people in the world, you said, or something like that, right? So we pull over to it some gas no station. Question. I'm buying bags of ice. I'm buying bags of ice for you, like a big old bag of ice to like cool you down or something, man, because you were just gone. You That potent stuff really fucked you up. Oh, I was a noodle. I was a noodle, man. I was just, I remember just wanting somebody to crush my head with a thing of concrete, you know? <laughs> End it for me, please. We, yeah, we did so a festival we, in uh, in California, uh, up around San Francisco, and this guy Tony, who worked with me, big guy, who uh, he'd come on these trips with me, and he was driving. So I show up in Cal. We have to show up in LA, and we have to drive this stuff up past San Francisco. So it's a long drive, right? An eight, ten hour drive or something like that of driving gear up. But we land in California, and of course we went to the dispensary right away, and and then we go to the go to get the gear and load it into the van and. You know, so we start out that morning going, all right, let's go, because it's the next day. It took us the day to get that. So we next morning, and I started smoking this this $25 joint. It was, it was $25 for this, this top shelf kind of thing. So, like Paul, about a half hour into this, all of a sudden, I'm just fucking lit out of my mind. I'm just laying back going, I'll be with you in a minute. And I'm out. <laughs> and he, he's, he kept going, you all right, man? You all right? I'm like, I'm fine. Just keep the AC running. Let's just go. I felt the same way. If there wouldn't have been air conditioned, it would have been over. I would have been dead. I had to have it blowing on me the whole time. Now, you know, for the most part, much like the guy in Princess Bride, I've spent years building up a resistance to Iocane powder. But <laughs> right. in this particular instance, it really got me. Like, I've, I've done I, I went to Amsterdam years ago, and... I'm walking around by myself and we'd gone to all the American places. The people I was with, had, they were shopping or something. So I thought, I want to go to a real Dutch place. I want to go someplace where they don't speak English and they don't cater to Americans. So I go into this joint Dutch Flowers and the guy behind the counter barely speaks English. And I say, you know, do you roll a pure joint? Because over there they mix it with tobacco. Right. You have to say pure joint if you want them to roll all marijuana. And he goes, my friend, I can roll it, but you cannot smoke it. And I said... <laughs> I've smoked the finest weed there is all over the world. Whatever you got, I can handle. So he makes oh, me a little cup of espresso. He gives me the joint, and I'm sitting there smoking the joint, drinking the espresso. And as I got further and further down to the end of the joint, his eyes got bigger and bigger. And I tapped <laughs> it out, and I smiled at him, and I said, that was really tasty. Can I have another? And he went, wow, yes, you can, my friend, but allow me to give you a souvenir mug of our place because no one's ever done that i've never seen anyone smoke an entire pure joint so i got a souvenir mug any, just being a really good stoner yeah do you have do you have a souvenir mug still i think you should put or you should show it in the next show <laughs> yeah um i think i think that one went in the divorce <laughs> she got the mug she got the damn mug this is your that's well, like I, your, I ate a 400 pound steak mug you know yeah it says, no. yeah the yeah, old ninety six, the old ninety like from uh, the movie uh, uh some uh, was it the, the Great Outdoors with uh, John Candy, the ninety six or we had to eat that big ninety six ounces of steak. That was Paul yeah, right there. Right. Yes. There's Paul's, there's Paul's face hanging on a 
and then somewhere in Amsterdam, like this man <laughs> right, it's still up, there to this joined, day. You know. yeah, <laughs> this guy came like, in and smoked <laughs> two joints, yeah. two pure joints. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one for each joint. One for each joint. You know. I, we're gonna have to go. We're gonna have to go there one day. Mike and say we know Paul Sanchez, and be like, <gasps> you know, it's like, <laughs> you know. and they'll be like, <laughs> can, can you smoke? Well, can you smoke too? That's what they'd be saying. Yeah, Louisa, well, like, can you do? I do did. I, the... I never. I've never. I've never smoked it, man. But you know, like I said, it, whoever does it, that's fine. I have no problem with it. You know. Obviously, you know, you'll give him a ride. We need you to keep give us rides. <laughs> yeah, he's my DD. When I'm in Chicago, you know, Luis is the DD. <laughs> and, and, I, and I love and I love the ten men when the ten men come to town, or like when we go up to Ashkosh, you know, they rent like a van. And you're walking by, and then, man, you think there was, like, a fire inside. You don't see who's in there. You just see, like, silhouettes of because of the smoke. And I ain't going to say which musician, but as I'm passing by, he rolls down the window. He's like, do you want some? I'm like, we're good. <laughs> you know, I, just, I just enjoy seeing everybody in this little incubator. My friend, uh, my friend Philip Gusman just uh, texted in. Uh, she got the mug. Is that a possible name for another song? And it, it would be Philly if I had fans that would tolerate a song full of profanities. <laughs> the mug, the fucking two-story house, a little piece of my ass. <laughs> she even took the yeah, hair gel to keeps your hair from like getting all curly and shit. I'm sure. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Did you get your hair cut? I can't tell. Mm. I got my hair cut for a commercial I thought I had next week, and then the agency went with another fucking piece of uh, shit. Uh, yeah, I didn't get the commercial. But I got a really clean look, so what the hell? You know, acting is yeah. almost as bad as being a musician as far as, you know, it might even be worse than being I gotta a musician. say, at least with being a musician, you get the gig, and you show up, and they give you some money. Sometimes right. it's not great money, but you get some money. The thing about being an actor is you have to audition. Which, in case anybody doesn't know, is fucking work. You have to memorize and shit, and, and, you, and it's free. Nobody's paying you for this. It took me a long time to get used to that, man. My friend Carl Palmer is a wonderful actor, and I went to him after a few. I'm like, dude, no, what is this audition bullshit? I got a picture. They've seen me in other things. They've seen me on Treme. Can't they make up their minds? What do you have to? It's free, and he's like, oh man, I love auditioning. I get to hone my craft. I'm like. I hone my craft every day at home, That's and right. <laughs> I don't need to hone it in front of people so they can tell me no. More, more fucking rejection in my life. Just what I was looking for. Not, not to mention showing up and there's like a room full of guys, and you're like, wait a second, I had an appointment at nine. What the fuck is right. going on here? Well, <laughs> like, bye, I saw guys. George Clooney. I saw George Clooney on Inside Actor Studio, and he had the best advice. This young guy stands up. He says, "Can you give me any advice about auditioning?" And he says, yeah, the best thing to remember about auditioning is there's almost no chance you're going to get the part. So just relax. Right. <laughs> it's like it really helps, like man. <laughs> it's like when I get auditions now, I don't even look at it until the day, until five minutes before I'm going to tape it because I have a great memory. So I'll set up the camera. I'll re read through the thing about three times, and then I got it memorized. I put it down. I say it with as little fucking emotion as I can and send it in. I almost never get the gig, but at least I'm not trying too hard. Right. The little guy from uh, Die Hard, the little black guy who plays the other cop, his friend, was talking yeah. about, uh, he was talking about, you know, when he got that role, um, he, he planned, he, you know, that was the last time he was auditioning. He told his mom, you know, all right, this is it. I've been trying to do this. I haven't gotten any breaks. You know, this, this is it. Last one. I think she actually talked him into going on this audition because he is dumb. Wow. And she's like, you got to go out and do this audition. And he's like, all right, this is it, though. It's the last one. And he said Wesley Snipes was in auditioning when he got there for the and same role. For the oh, same my God. Role. So <laughs> he went in there and he goes, you know what? He's listening and. It's like, I'm just going to do something completely different. So he walks in, and he just puts on a... He's not even trying to play the character. He's like, my name is David, whatever it is, and I just want to tell you, I'd be the best damn police officer you've ever seen. I mean, that's... I mean, can't you feel it coming out of me? I just uh, resume authority. <laughs> authority comes out of me. And they loved him. <laughs> and so he wound up getting the You know the what? Role. The movie wouldn't have been the same without that guy. I agree. Because he was, he, he was great comic relief for a lot of it, and then he was great. He was a really great poignant addition when you find out his backstory. Right. I, I, I thought he was great. I love that guy. All right. Yeah. I don't know what's saying. 
I don't know his name either. I think it's David something. Um, but I, like I said, I saw it on one of these, uh, the movies that made us. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. On Netflix. I love a lot of people. I don't know their names. In right. fact, I, I love my ex-wife. I didn't even know her at all. So, you know. <laughs> but uh, I definitely understood his his, his pain, uh, you know. But that, that's, just, that's just a mic drop I never even buy. Just drop that mic, baby. <laughs> I try when I can, Luis. That's all right, though. So speaking so, of movies, I mean, I Suicide Squad, did anybody? I mean, we know you didn't see a poem. You guys, I want you guys to discuss Suicide Squad freely while I go to replenish my tea. Because I'm going to watch tea. it very soon, but I haven't. So just go off, guys. No, no spoilers yet. What do you How mean about this? Did you spoilers. did you like it? Did you like it? It was fine. It was yeah. good. I thought it was, it was good it was too. Good. I mean, I'm not sure. I it's, mean, it's everybody's making it out to be like you know the best comic book movie of all time, and I don't see that. But it was fun. Well, you know why? You know why? Well, you know why they're doing that, right? <laughs> because those are A D C fans, right? Right. All these, all these DC fans need a rebound from all the shitty DC movies that have been coming out. I guess you're right. Right. So, so, so they're so like they're finally like, pointing to something, going, "This one was good. It was fun." You know, oh my god, it had the Marvel touch. Yeah, I mean, you like know. I saw this one guy this morning go. He's like, "I gave it a nine point five out of 10. I go nine point five. Shit. If I had to do a ten scale, the movie was about a seven or an eight at best for me. You know, I mean. I think like, you're right. I think like a seven and a half. It was a good movie. All right, it was worth. Yeah, it, it was, it was worth your time. It was fun. I mean, like, uh, like for example, it was like it was like the it was like the Black Widow movie. You know, I saw it in the theater. It was good fun, right? But there's, you know, I'm not gonna be like, oh, Scott Johansson carried the whole. It was a fun no. movie. Like I told you guys, was, I, was I like felt the same way. Like the Black Widow was a seven for me. Same thing. Sort of one of those middle of the yeah. pack Marvel movies. It's good. Yes. It's fine. It moves the plot along. Was, there's some good stuff filler, in it. it was filler. Yes. It was, um, you know, it was like somebody grabbed a comic book and they made it into a movie. It was a standalone issue, done. It wasn't linked to anything else. Right. You have this one, James Gunn, you know, pretty much I read this one article where DC said, let James Gunn do what the hell he wants. I mean, it was they shot did at let Marvel. Him do what he wants. You could at, tell. Yeah. It was a shot at DC for letting him go. Right. I mean, it was a shot at Marvel for letting him go after that one little tweet that he posted 10 years ago, right? That was Alan Horn. So, and. And he's been, you know, yeah, they went after Alan Horn after all of that. I think he eventually lost his job over that, all of that nonsense. But Yeah, so, I mean, so it was, a, you know, so, I don't know if you remember this one movie with Rain Wilson called Super. You ever see that one? Vaguely. Mm -hmm. No? I so, pretty much what happens is you had Rain Wilson, Kevin Bacon, Liv Tyler, um, now Elliot, oh gosh, the girl who was in, she, now, she, she, um, she, um, Ellen pa Elliot Page now, Ellen Page, made this one movie where Kevin Bacon pretty much kidnaps Rainy Wilson's wife. And Rainy Wilson decides to um, become like a superhero to rescue her from Kevin Bacon. And Kevin Bacon has like built up on drugs and everything. And, you know, once when, really when it's time for him to rescue her, you know, she doesn't want to go with him. Right, his own wife doesn't want to go with him, right? So, and that was a that was a James Gunn movie. That was a James Gunn movie. So, it's called Super? And the reason I bring that up was that yeah. All right. So, whatever. So, what ends up happening is a lot of he. Well, a lot, so, the reason I bring that up, from what I noticed, he used a lot of that in this movie. A lot of the blowing up the faces. I mean, because this one gets really gory. Right. Right, Bob. This this, this new movie. People are losing their arms. People are getting shot in the face. I mean, he's not apologetic for anything. He's really, you know, I see blood splatter everywhere. You know, is this the same guy that did the uh, Deadpool movies? By the way, no. Because I, gotta say, I love Deadpool. I, I love Deadpool because he's hilarious in the role. But man, it's bloody. I mean, it's, it's no, this, this, bloody. This, this, this is this is a this, this is would be a harder too. R. This is much this is much bloodier. Well, I don't know if it's um, more bloody than like Deadpool. Remember, they ripped Deadpool in half and stuff. I mean, it really gets yeah, you know. But, but I mean, you know, when does anybody kill anybody? Does anybody kill anybody's puppy? Because I, I I can forgive it if they kill the puppy. No, but they do kill a bird. <laughs> and they, <laughs> oh, that's close and enough. They kill, a, they, they kill a starfish. And they kill a starfish. All right, they're, they're killing innocent <laughs> starfish and birds. Okay, then they deserve what they get. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're villains. Look, don't don't. Yeah, these aren't anti heroes. Heroes. These are villains. These guys are villains, and they prove it often. Um, the the, the thing yeah, is, like, I thought Guardians of the Galaxy was actually a better movie, right? I mean, that's probably oh, gotcha. still going to go down as Gun's, I love that movie. Gun's greatest achievement is probably still going to be Guardians of the Galaxy Volume One. Like, oh, he oh, did he that. Was that yeah. was a great movie. Yeah. He did both of them. Yeah. Both Guardians of the Galaxy. The, you know the I love thing, them both. The best thing about yeah, the thing about that Guardians of the Galaxy movie, that first one, it's almost like um, if you, you know, people are gonna get mad at me, but it's almost like a modern day Star Wars, right? It is. I mean, it, it, the movie could have stood alone. You didn't With need Harrison to know what Ford, happened. like Indiana Jones, as the, I mean, he knew he was going after Indiana Jones type vibe with uh, Star Lord. That was kind of the, that that's yeah. what the, oh, yeah. that was the know, character he arc. A lot. He, yeah. stole, he stole a lot, but he, but he, but it was, but people appreciated. It. it wasn't just lip service. You know, people got the whole like again, the beginning of the Raiders of the Lost Ark when he has to rescue the little golden head thing. Either the same thing with the with the ball, you know. So, I mean, he did it very well, and it's one of the few movies, if you think about it, where they nicely incorporate the music into the movie. Yes. Right. Yes. So, yeah. And, 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 and look, he's got a he's got a history of that, and he tries to do it in this one, but the songs that he used weren't quite. I mean, the no. songs that he used in Guardians of the Galaxy are just iconic. Yeah. songs yeah. and on this one yeah. he just didn't have they just didn't have the songs right i mean you notice that too though right Luis? i mean he's he's got his he definitely has his needle drops all through the whole damn thing uh right but he does a lot of punk rock and different things there's a few songs in there that you're gonna go oh yeah i love that you know like the people who died stuff he, he does that one and oh nice uh, uh it opens yeah. up with Folsom prison blues so he's got a few of them right. in there but then yeah. He also digs into the ones that you're like, all right, I don't know where this is coming from. It's barely cool. Um, you know, so he had a bunch of that going on, too. So, but yeah, Guardians I mean, so is like, like you can play the whole fucking thing and that you could just take that volume and listen to it and go, these are just one great song after another, you know. And, uh, and the best just... part is that these are songs that we all know, right? right. You know, in, in the Guardians of the Galaxy movie. And he has them as part of his you know, as a remembrance to his mother and mother, these are the right. songs that mom introduced him to, right? So, you know, so those are the kind of things that I like that he incorporated the soundtrack into the movie, which is very rare. I mean, and it, unless it's a musical, right? But this wasn't a musical, but then you got, you know, Star-Lord listening to, you know, everything under the sun in the movie, right? So, and, and people can pick up to that and people could appreciate that. So... You know, he tried doing the same thing with Suicide Squad. It just didn't hit the way it was supposed to. And, of course, you had all these villains. <clears throat> and when you had that kind of big amount of villains, it's hard to develop a story arc for everybody. So, you know, one of the things they say is, don't get, you know, one of the things they warn you about the movie, Polly, is they say, don't get too attached to a character. Right? Well, because, to be fair, you know, Louise, most of that's over in the first 10 minutes. Uh, most of that. Trying not to say that. Okay, I'm but sorry. Fine. okay, so let's okay, so let's okay, so let's let's grab on that for a second. You're right. A lot of the characters probably die in the first ten minutes of the movie. Right. <laughs> and the thing is, when you don't know half the characters, it's hard to get devastated about it. Right. Yeah, right. I don't think that was the I don't think that was really the point, obviously. You know what I mean? Oh, oh obviously, you know. but but again, you know, it it, it it quote unquote it hurts more when you got to know the character throughout the movie. Right. And right. there's a little That's bit of that so, going on too. I mean, it's he's not shy about nobody's safe in these in this movie. Like right. so just like go into it knowing off. anybody can get killed. Somebody you like looks like the hero, he could definitely die before the end of the movie. I'll leave you that. It's like nobody's right. safe. <laughs> nobody's so I mean safe. I mean here's one here's one spoiler, right? They killed off Captain Boomerang, who was in the first suicide squad. But they right? did it in the first like in the before the fucking credits finished. He's dead. Right. So yeah. <laughs> so so, uh, so what does that tell you, though? I mean, from all of, from everybody who died, he was the one that was most surprised because he's the one that you already had a character arc behind, right? right? You already knew some of the story from the previous movie. And you're like, oh shit, they killed off back. You know, one of the most established characters already. He got killed, and I hate to say this, but you start to see all these guys who were in Marvel movies now in DC movies, <laughs> and vice versa, right? And you're just Idris, like, Idris you're just Elba. Like, <laughs> right yeah he was like he was in the thor movies right you know you know um roker was in the thor movies you know it was, you know you see all the people that shot you know that uh james gunn used from 
Marvel, he brought everybody, he gave them a new job, and that's fine. But I'm over here trying to suspend the fact that these guys were in another Marvel movie, you know? Now, I so did, I, I did, I read an article yesterday, and I know you guys are going to know more about this than me, but the new Spider Man movie is coming out, and they're going to use the multiverse that they've now established with the Loki series. And it is it true that it's going to have both Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, and the guy that's playing Spider-Man now, and they're going to use Michael Keaton as Batman? I mean, I can't wait to see this movie. Yeah, no, it's supposed to be... Oh, a, oh, it, it, Michael Keaton's not in that movie. Michael Keaton's not in, in that the Flash one. movie. In the Flash movie. The Flash movie. And he's going to be DC. an old Batman? Yep. Yeah, yeah they're Batman doing Flashpoint. Yeah, they're doing, like, I love multiple it. multiverse. I can't, you know. Yeah, and, and, yeah. So the other one that shows up in the Marvel movie supposedly is uh, like Doc Ock from the second Spider-Man movie, and possibly even Green. Oh, Goblin. Green Goblin. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, I just I think yeah. I'm so excited about this now. It's like they brought together all the best elements of the Spider-Man movies into one movie. So what I hear about what I hear is going to happen is so you know at the at the end of the last one where they outed him, Mysterio outs him as Peter Parker. Right. Um. So he's supposed to go to Doctor Strange for help on that. And then Doctor Strange does something at the same time. Some of this other shit's going on with WandaVision and Loki. The, the stuff that happened during WandaVision. You don't know what happened with WandaVision, but you might need to know. I'm going to finish WandaVision. WandaVision. It's supposed to tie into WandaVision and Loki, and he's doing something, and it's at the same time, and that's what makes everything go fucking haywire uh, on top of the Kang right. thing. My vow to you before next week's edition of the show, I will have. <laughs> Painstakingly worked my way through the cleft of one division. You know, like, text message Ted and Connie. See if they'll send you one of those brownies first before you start watching it. Then it. By the way, is yeah, that what you heard too, Luis? Is that what you heard too? That like they're gonna tie yeah, in. So, so I heard that you know I heard that because of all this trouble, you know Peter Parker needs a lawyer and he ends up getting Daredevil. That's right. He ends up with Daredevil from the Netflix series. That's awesome. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. And that's going to be Daredevil's so, way in. But then eventually he goes to Doctor Daredevil. Strange. We're talking about the guy from Netflix? Yes, the Netflix. Charlie Cox. Yes. Oh, he was a great Daredevil. He was a great yep. Daredevil. Yes, and in fact, they're like going to bring back on Disney+, Plus. Daredevil's coming back, and so is uh, Luke Cage. He's just one of the most amazing. Apparently Luke Cage is supposed to be coming back on Disney+. Plus. Oh, um, nice. And Daredevil. They finally got the rights back on those characters, and I think they've decided... I know they'll probably bring out Jessica Jones, Iron Fist, who knows, but there's already talk you know, of Luke and Daredevil. Louise didn't like Iron Fist, but I, there was a, there were, to me there was a lot to like about Iron Fist. I was okay with I was okay with all of them. I really did like them all, especially the, the, I, I second, the second Iron Fist. I like the second season better, but yeah. Me too. I, mean, I like the second well, season. Uh, but I like the second season. I didn't think the actor was a particularly great choice for the for the role. Agreed. Was my problem. Agreed. That's where it comes from. That's where it comes from. Because he's yeah. a Game of yeah. Thrones alumni, right? So that's what they. That's yes. why he got the role. Because he was on, at the time it was Game of Thrones, and he was all you know. He played the uh, the Dornish prince. Oh yeah, um, yeah, you're better than not I Dornish am. Not Dornish prince. The, uh, the the the, the prince of uh, yeah, the girl that winds up marrying King Robert's. Uh, brother yeah it's one of those guys yeah, yeah, he, yeah. Was, he was one anyway of those guys that got killed off yeah so i mean so you know so i actually read this one article where somebody like from inside marvel said here goes the whole article what ha what's going to happen in the movie but of course marvel has got a lot of strips laying around on purpose right so read what you want believe what you want and that may be the script they're using Right. They may not be the script they use. Right. Right. Well, so, I do know that they had trouble getting Toby to sign on for a while. And finally, really? Did he want to do it? He held out for what, either what? more money or something. I don't know. Uh -oh. uh -oh. What's, he, what's he doing nowadays? What, he's, what he he claimed he had retired. He claimed he's retired. Now he's coming out of retirement. Well, supposedly. he retired because he had shit for jobs. That's what he had. Never By the way, I didn't see Toby. Did you anybody know, ever see that movie me. about um, the card players or whatever? The. Uh, yeah, that was a good movie. Right. Um, the girl can't who... Uh, the name of Jessica can't Chastain, of, right? Jessica Chastain, yes. So her high roller guy was supposed to be Tobey Maguire. The yeah. actor guy, you knew that from the yeah. original biography? Names I, weren't I, named, I, I, but I, it, it was highly... the character based on. Yes, the Tobey Maguire. He was a big-time gambler. He loved just ripping people apart. Uh, yeah, you know, he was a good he was a good card player and really loved fucking people up. He, had, he enjoyed that more <laughs> than the money, 
You know, to him, just ruining people was more. And to see Toby Maguire that way, really, you know, it's very, it's crazy, right? I mean, he's just such Mister. You know, he's fucking Ron right. Howard. You know, he looks like Ron Howard. Howard. I did and, not like Tobey Maguire. He was such a crappy Spider-Man. Sam Raimi's movie saved him. You know, the thing about Spider-Man, he one time said, one time Wolverine told him, he goes, don't you ever stop making jokes. And Spider-Man said, listen, if I wasn't making jokes, I'd be crying. You know, that's Spider-Man. You know, that's why, you know, Peter Parker, it's, um, Peter Parker lets his hair down, so to speak, when he's Spider-Man. That's where he's really himself. But he's also so, a smart ass. I mean, it's the intention. He's supposed yeah, to be a this, smart uh, this latest kid is the best one. He's the best Spider-Man. Yeah, ever. he is. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. better. Much, much better. I mean, I don't like that he's always calling everybody sir. You know, Spider-Man is his own guy, and Spider-Man eventually realizes that he's just as, you know, bad as everybody else. But this one, he, he always plays second citizen to everybody, and I don't really right. like that. It's, he needs to come, the character needs to be like, I'm Spider-Man. You know, I'm your neighbor friendly hood safe in the Spider Man, but I just don't like oh Mr. Stark, Mr. Dude, well, I did because he was a teenager no. and he's playing with adults and so he I was... get it. I get it, but I'll be honest with you, Spider Man could beat up so many people. You know what I mean? He could take Iron Man, he could well, match I mean, Iron Man. But 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 so. but the thing is is like it, it's not like they I don't shy away Spider-Man from that. Take, let's just stop there. I don't think Spider Man could take Iron Man. I think All he right, went listen. too far. Wait. There's a scene in Infinity War where Spider-Man walks up and that big giant thing is trying to punch Tony Stark and crush him. And Spider-Man just grabs his arm like it's nothing and goes, hey, Mr. Stark, what's going on now? He's like, he's literally <laughs> the strongest guy out of all those guys. He's stronger than, he literally, he's stronger than Iron Man with his Iron Man suit. He's like supposed to, the, the, according to the comics, he's like 800 times, has to do with a spider's strength, blah, 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 800 yes, times a yeah. normal man. So he's literally the, one of the strongest. I mean, he's not stronger than Captain Marvel or anything, but no, no, he's no, but crazy he strong. Um, he is crazy strong. He, a fucking Winter Soldier and the one before that, Civil War, goes to try to punch him, and he just grabs his arm and goes, wow, you have a metal arm, and starts moving his arm around <laughs> like it's nothing. And so they don't they don't shy away from it in these movies. He's strong, and that's he's kind strong. of the point. He is strong. But, yeah, so what else, <laughs> one of the other things that I heard that's going to happen in the – would be movie so i just quote from what i read right is eventually mary jane dies on him mj dies on him oh no kidding and, so they're gonna oh. go there. and, he, and he manages to bring her back but when he brings her back she has no memory of who he is huh oh. you know? so that's further in the future i'm assuming or is this in the next movie so that's, that's supposed to that's supposed to happen in this next movie interesting so, wow so then what ends up happening is he supposedly meets Gwen Stacy, who was his actually first love, right before Mary Jane. Mark's right; so, it's his humility that makes him a great character because he and he also yes. gets his ass kicked all the time. As strong as he is, yes. he's constantly getting his ass kicked. Uh, oh, but, he's a scrapper. He's, he's, a, he's scrapper. a scrapper. Whether or not he wants, <laughs> he's definitely a scrapper. So yes, yeah, so and that's you, one see, of the you notice, you notice, I didn't make any objection to the possibility of MJ dying because Spider Man is a comic book. As right. opposed to Superman, which is fact. <laughs> right. I see. I see. I see. That's right. It's, it's myth versus reality here. You know. I mean, like, yeah, you can change Spider-Man's story if you want to because it's just like a comic book. You can make uh, Aunt, Mary, Aunt, Aunt May hot if you want to. I mean, it's out of character, but whatever. But you go changing Superman's things, and I'm like, hey, that's historical documents, man. <laughs> right. The historical Lois documents. Lane did not see the Fortress of Solitude at the same time as Superman. I don't want to know about that movie. I mean, honestly, you know, there's some things that just have to carry movies. Like, for example, like we like we mentioned before, BBA, the new Star Wars movies. Why the fuck does an android a beach ball? You know what I mean? And the whole thing is you need to get him through the movie. He, that boy needs to go 60 miles an hour. You know, I love that android. I love that little guy. I have no issue with him. Yeah. I, I, no, I, no, try, I, like, I still love R2-D2 better, but you're Star right. Star Wars. Did you yes. see on the news that Disney is opening up a Star Wars themed hotel, which you can have the complete Star Wars experience for forty eight hundred dollars for two days for two people. So wow. I guess yeah. Jeff Bezos has his next space project. <laughs> I guess you're right. Forty eight hundred dollars, huh? And they and they put you like the whole time. You never out of Star Wars, huh? 
It, um, they should change their motto to the happiest place in the world if you got money. Right. For the rich people. <laughs> for $400, yeah. we could, you, could, you could probably like redo your own room to make it look like the Millennium Falcon. You know? Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's like, it's, come it, over, it, you know. It's a down payment on a car or a house or something. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, my, uh, my spidey yep. sense is tingling, and it's telling me that we're over time. Yeah, we're over. And I got stuff to do today. I'm sure everybody's – Paul's yeah. got auditions. Yeah, I'm, I'm working. Um, so, just, so just remember, what happens on Wednesday is the new Marvel What If cartoons that are coming out on Disney+. Plus. I know they're cartoons, okay. Polly, but they're, they're going to give you, like, different stories. Like, what if, uh, you know, Black Panther was – um, Star Lord was uh, Star yeah. Lord. Right. Chala, I mean, you know? I'll watch it. I'll watch it, and we'll talk about it. So next give week. it a try. Let's see. What, let's see what they do. All right, gentlemen. All right. You guys have a good one. Say goodbye to everybody. Yes. Uh, have a nice weekend. I right, see Shamar. I'll tell him you said hello on yes, Sunday. Yes, please do. Tell Shamar. We're yeah, please right. tell Shamar that hello. I, I want to tell, tell him. I'm going to I'm going to tell him to get on the show. All right. So yes. I'm going to try to plug the like. Shamar, you got to get on the show. It probably hasn't invited you already. I don't care if it's at 9 o'clock a.m. I you want him come to come on the show, show, but I figure he's too busy right now because he's on tour. <laughs> he is, but, you know, what, what's 20 minutes, man? You know. All right, well, you right, ask guys. him, and then I'll, you ask him, and then let me know when you've asked him, and then I'll text him and say, Luis told me you said you'd be on the show. <laughs> Sunday night. Oh, yeah. I'll, 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 shit, I don't care. Dude, if you need, listen, Paul, if you need to put my name through dirt to get you through the day, I'm okay with that, man. I don't give a shit. I love that about you, man. I've been doing it for years. I haven't told you before, but I've been doing it for years. <laughs> hey, hey JT, I wish I had an explosion because I would do the Alderaan experience for you. Because you're right. That, that, that would probably be a shitty one to go, hey, we just got here and your hotel blows up. You know, three minutes into the, the <laughs> stay. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, uh, we took the Alderaan experience. <laughs> yeah. uh, hey, listen. Hey, guys. If there's, if there's a slave Leia waiting for me in the room, let's go. That's all I got to uh, say. That's right. Yeah, I'm, just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Louis I'm Angels kidding. are waiting for him in the room, and then the Alderaan experience blows the whole place up. <laughs> they're not Louis Angels. They're not Louis Angels. You guys are going to get me in trouble with all my friends. Like, I saw that show. <laughs> Where you're a fucking shit. I never said it. I never said it. You can blame it on Lorelai. She's the one who got you in trouble. I'm blaming, well, I'm blaming this one on Polly, just in case. So, I'll give Polly a good man. Fuck, fucking musicians, man. Always making this shit the way they go, the way they want to. You know? Right. They, I don't just present any pictures. Right. I just I was trying to show you guys off. And of course, musicians, gross. Hey, gross. man. Blame me for shit I didn't do. You won't be the first. <laughs> But, but this right. would be blame that you would. This would be blame you wouldn't mind. I mean, listen, just real quick, real, uh, cause I remember this. I went to visit a cousin in St. Louis, and she's older now. She goes, "Hey, I remember you." I said, "What's?" It? She goes, "What's up?" I, she says, "She says one time when we're driving through the Arc in Saint, downtown St. Louis, you told me that was going to be the biggest McDonald's in the world, but they couldn't finish completing it." She goes, "And I believed you." <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> like, yeah. All right, guys, I got to go. See ya. All right. We'll see you next time. Bye. Well, I used to keep my money in a cookie jar. It was shaped like a cat, it was a present from my mother I read a lot of books, but I couldn't see between the lines I'll have another cup of coffee if you don't mind Well, her hair is as black as an alleyway And it used to be red, and it used to be blonde Truth is, her hair changes color all the time. I'll have another cup of coffee if you don't mind. I'll have another cup of coffee if you don't mind. Well, I'm staring at her shoulder, but it's not what I see. When I hear two fellas fighting in the booth across from me. So I wipe away the ashes from an empty kind of seat And 
I wish I wasn't homesick. I wish I wasn't. 